I have a plastic bottle for you. Let me take that off you. That we could do with plenty of these. All right. We have okay. a great home for these. I could wear that. It's so soft. And you, hopefully you will. <laughs> this is 100% recycled PET. How many bottles you need to collect in order to have one t-shirt? I am wearing 100% recycled plastic bottles. The biggest challenge you guys have as a company? Certainly the, the recovery of clean material is where the problems start. Three years ago we were working out of my living room, so it's quite a good feeling to, to have a nice office like this. When is it going to be ready? That's the uh, six million dollar question, but yes, we do have a, a date now. We have everything signed. Going to the schools and are you like educating? Yes, so the whole Simply Bottles campaign is all about um, teaching the children that plastic has a value. That you are capable to do and, uh, and ready for that. I'm making that commitment on camera. <laughs> we will buy up to a thousand tonnes a month of your <laughs> plastic if you invest in sorting machinery. Hey guys, in last episode we spoke about food and agrotechnology company. This time I'm in Dubai Science Park and we're visiting company that designs and manufactures clothing. Clothing from recycled plastic bottles. Let's go and check them. Hi Evan, nice how are you? To see you. Likewise. Well, two things for today. I know you guys moved to the new office, which is, looks beautiful. Thank you. And another thing, I have a plastic bottle for you. Let me take that off you. That we could do with plenty of these. All right. We have a okay. great home for these. Tell me more what uh, guys so, you're doing with it. So yeah, we'll recycle this in the PET bag, which is PET plastic, which you can see at the bottom of the bottle. It's food grade plastic, and basically this is one of the best plastics for recycling. All right, but I know it's not only about the plastic, your company. No, it's not. Sorry, let me just remove the bottle. Generally speaking, we need the PET bottles and I'll show you the process of what we do with that. But basically I am wearing 100% recycled plastic bottles. I developed the business about 10 years ago, having a, had a background in textile development, um, manufacturing clothing. And I looked at the feasibility of actually using plastic bottles rather than creating polyester from oil. Um, and worked with the supply chain in the Far East and in, uh, in, in, um, in Asia to look at actually recycling local plastic, extruding it into a fibre and then spinning it into yarn to create all different types of polyester uh, materials. And is everything actually from, let's say, plastic bottle? Yes, everything we do is from plastic bottles. We do do blends as well. So we blend cotton, we blend viscose, oh, okay, um, but we're trying to get 100% PET plastic uh, as our, our core collections. Uh, we've managed to do that now with dry fit for sportswear. So uh, this is actually um, a technology that will allow uh, the fabric to breathe because polyester, as you probably know, is actually hotter to wear than cotton, which is why a lot of people uh, stay with cotton. Did you know about? Uh, no, I know. Plastic as a material was invented back in the 50s and was always invented to be recycled. It's just people's habits are such that they just live in a throwaway society and they just think somebody else will clean it up. Uh, and that's what's causing all the pollution. Um, it's not the plastic that's causing the pollution, it's the people. Yeah. Um, so that is, that, is a, that is the problem. In fact, there was a, somebody uh, said to me the other day that their banknotes, most of the banknotes these days are made from plastic, but you don't see banknotes lying on the beach. Correct, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's responsibility, it's taking responsibility for a material that has been created for our convenience. Correct. 
Well, I'm really excited to the tour of the art. Good. Come this way. All right. So if you'd like me to go give you a brief yes, rundown please. on what happens here. Plastic bottle. This is, we don't get plastic bottles that look like this. Yeah. Our plastic bottles tend to be flat. They tend to be covered in dirt, uh, complete with the lids and everything with else. The branding and everything. Uh, and, you know, quite frankly, they're, they, they're quite disgusting, the, the conditions that we tend to get them in. But in an ideal world, we will receive plastic like this. The more segregation we do, the better chance we've got of getting it this clean. So then we take the plastic itself, the plastic bottles itself, and we shred it uh, through a series of shredding machines to create a flake. This flake has had actually had two washes, a hot wash and a cold wash, mm. to get it completely clean and contamination free of the other plastics, including the lids and the the, the labels. Do you mind if I'm checking? For sure. So, so this is actually. Oh, <laughs> drops it on the floor. So put it on, yeah, there you go. So this yeah. is this is actually food grade PET, which can go back into food grade packaging. Okay, so it can be so, recycled. So this can go back from here into flake, back into packaging. Okay. Not so much into bottles, but back into film packaging. Yeah. It can go back into bottles, but there's another stage that it has to go through. These are heated into a liquid and they're forced through a spinneret, which is like a shower head, if you can imagine. Okay. So the, 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 the melted plastic is forced through the shower head and it comes out into strands. You'll see these strands here. Yeah. Oh, but it looks... I, w I couldn't believe that this is from the plastic, let's say from the plastic bottle, from that material. Yeah. It's so soft. So this is 100% recycled polyester. This has other applications as well. People use it for stuffing in cushions. You can use it for carpets. You can use it for all sorts of different, uh, different uh, upholstery fabrics. Yeah. I could wear that. It's so soft. And you, hopefully you will, <laughs> because by the time we get to this stage, we spin it into yarn, and this is 100% recycled PET yarn. Looks the same like, like others. Yeah, so this, co th this can be produced in different thicknesses depending on the fabrics that you're producing. Um, and it can also be blended with cotton, as you see here, which is a 50-50 cotton recycled polyester mix. Okay, so that's a mix, this one? That's a mix, whereas I'm wearing 100% recycled polyester. These items here, for example, these are 100% recycled PET. And this is, um, this is like a chiffon fabric. So is this material common thing, let's say, in the consumer world, like you can find Recy in this shop? Recycled material is getting more and more popular. A lot of the main companies, certainly Zara, H&M, uh, those sort of companies have made a commitment to being fully sustainable by 2025. Okay. Uh, which means either it's going to be organic or it's going to be recycled. So this part of the process here, we're doing in Dubai. We would love to do everything here, but we can't because it's just not feasible. Yeah. There's so many different parts. I mean, even once you get to this stage, you have a factory that makes different types of fabrics from this yarn. You have another factory that will dye the colour. You have another factory that will cut the garment. Um, so we saw that really as an opportunity to try and set something up here. To, to solve the, the, the plastic pollution problem. Um, only about between four and 6% of plastic production is currently recycled. And we intend to increase that recycling rate to over 20% in the next two years. So for that, we need to drive a whole awareness campaign, a whole recycling campaign. We've done some major projects with the Pope's visit last year, okay. in Abu Dhabi, where we did all the recycling for that. We did the F1 in Abu Dhabi last year. Events are great for us because it's a great way of telling the story and it uh, it's, um, confines the amount of plastic that we need within a small area. And we set the bins out. We have our own stands there. So we actually show this process and people understand and they, you know, they come past, put a bottle in and, and they have to see some evidence of, of what's being done with it because otherwise they just... Yeah. In their heads, they just think it's going to, going to landfill yeah, and it's so a waste of time. Like what you guys here, like yeah. trying to communicate that, creating this kind of, I would say, a story yeah. from plastic to t-shirt. Yeah. This is quite interesting. <laughs> I 
don't know if you can guess what this is. This is a, a gastrolith. So it's a, a, a stomach uh, from a, a young camel. 50% of camels in the region die through plastic ingestion. So this is the, the stomach that was taken out of the dead camel. And you can see lots of things from ropes. Uh, there is actually a bottle cap there as well. Yes. <laughs> so that's um, actually what they eat together so with the grass. It. Yes. So unfortunately, they eat everything they can get their hands on or their eyes on. So there's a big issue, yeah. Yeah, big issue. And we take this around the schools with the Simply Bottles schools campaign and show the kids. All right. Their reactions are, uh, <laughs> are, worth, uh, are worth seeing. So that's, uh, that's not an award, but it is something to uh, consider. To highlight. Um, this was one of the uh, recent awards that we had from uh, TIP in Abu Dhabi with the Environment Agency, which has been really good for us because uh, the Environment Agency are very supportive of what we do. And in fact, we're, we're consulting with them over legislation now um, to try and uh, come up with uh, an initiative that will reward consumers for recycling. We're working with a company who have produced RVMs, reverse vending machines. So much like the vending machine where you put your money in and you get something out, yes. here you put in a plastic bottle and you receive points or you receive credits or you receive promotional okay. um, and, uh, incentives. Uh, to recycle and this is something that we're looking at launching next year with the Environment Agency um, and we're also looking at doing a similar project in KSA. Okay, I think I saw in social media you guys did some kind of test or, or yes. whatever yes. this we, vending we, machine. We yeah. had a webinar and a live webinar yeah. of the actual uh, demonstration. Yeah. So yeah, hopefully we'll have that up and running um, fairly, fairly soon uh, because everybody here has targets as well. The government have targets to reach. 20% um, of uh, production needs to be recycled by the end of next year, whereas only, as I say, 4 to 6% is reached at the moment. So there is quite a long way to go. Um, and it's proven from Europe, America and Australia that if you actually reward consumers, yes. then they will make an effort to recycle. Of course. I think I'll, I'll, like from my personal like uh, approach, I would love to you know, I don't know collect ten bottles, yeah. and bring it over there, yeah, and I don't know, get cinema ticket or something. Yeah, exactly. That would or, be awesome. Or, or uh, a free brunch even. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, <laughs> I think I, then none of the plastic bottles will lay down on the floors. Everybody gonna pick exactly. it up. Exactly. Well, that that's what we need and that's what we want, and that's the only way the recycling industry can survive is if everybody mm. recycles. It's a community action um, and yeah I mean we need a thousand tons of plastic a month it's a lot of plastic so you guys just moved recently here yeah we we actually did the whole build uh, from scratch so it was shell and core before we moved here so we designed it and uh, constructed it um, with a local company okay um, with a view to really having enough space that we needed having an open open space, a nice environment to work in, and to be able to showcase our products and have people come in on, uh, for meetings. Um, three years ago, we were working out of my living room, so it's quite uh, a, a good feeling to, right, to have a nice office like this. Good. Congratulations. Yeah, well <laughs> done. I see so, some familiar yeah, yeah, logos we, already. We also um, are appointed as licensees for Expo, so we're producing all of Expo's merchandise using recycled PET, um, which is a great story for Expo, obviously. Great for the sustainability goals that they have. Um, makes a unique product. And um, yeah, it's uh, initially T-shirts. Um, we're doing some hats and polo shirts, uh, generally leisure wear. Um, so we have the license for that. And this one is 100% or? 100%, yeah. Um, whereas some of these here actually, yeah, so this is the dry fit that I was talking about before, which is more performance um, fabric, okay. which takes moisture away from the body and allows, allows the fabric to breathe. Yeah. This is a cotton mix. Yeah, it feels different now. Yeah. Um, but this is all made locally. Um, 
and so we design quick question yeah so let's say this is uh, for the sports yeah for the activities yeah let's say how many bottles we need to collect or you need to collect in order to have one t-shirt let's say 10 in this case from the 10 bottles ten plastic bottles, bottles you can make a t-shirt t-shirt yeah that's great yeah. But please don't bring me 10 bottles in last to take away a t-shirt. Yes. <laughs> a lot of people ask us, if I bring you 10 plastic bottles, can I have a free t-shirt? No. Because <laughs> you're not like open for the public to, of course, you're not a we're recycling not, company. We're not, uh, well, we're not, biz we're not B2C really at all. This is the only product that we do B2C. Everything else is B2B. So we do a lot of contract manufacturing uh, for a lot of the larger brands. Um, up here, you can see some of the bags. We did this recently for the Burj Al Arab. Um, this is 100% PET. Um, that's a beach bag that they give away to their guests. Uh, this one here is for Warner Brothers. Again, that's 100% So, so it's like kind of partnerships like with... Uh... Yeah, so a lot of the companies that we work with also do the collections with us. So we give them the bins, we, give, we educate their uh, facilities management team uh, to basically collect the bins, check, out, check how yes. contaminated they are before we take them in the truck. Um, but yeah, we like to get the company itself to get behind the campaign to collect the plastic and then create something that they, either their workers can use or they can give away to, to visitors. So you're giving kind of know-how? everything how but it's collect. closing the loop it's completely closing the loop from the ground picking up the plastic taking it through the process developing a product and then selling it back to the the, the customer yes um, and that's that's really the the foundation of our business and then these are this is basically our stock fabric these are all the colors that we have stocks on um, that we've so produced that's the process when you mentioned that cannot happen in UAE yeah it should be somewhere the else dying the yeah dying. So if we didn't have dyeing, we would just end up with white fabric. So not everybody wants to wear white fabric, but there's different printing techniques nowadays, which I can just show you here. So, so this garment here, it looks like a, a blue t-shirt, but it's not actually, it's a white t-shirt that's been printed blue. Okay, oh, so the top <laughs> layer was printed yeah, blue. Yeah. yeah, that's why it's white inside. Understood. But this type of printing, sublimation printing, is perfect for polyester. You can't do this on cotton. And you can't get blended colours. Like here, you can see that there's a blend, a graduation of colour. Okay, yeah, colours. Which you can't do on cotton. Then we do school uniforms, which is another great uh, opportunity, really, to engage school children and show them that their school uniforms can be made from recycled plastic bottles that they collect. Yeah. Going to the schools, then are you like educating? Yes, so the whole Simply Bottles campaign uh, is all about um, teaching the children that plastic has a value, teaching them not to throw away their plastic um, with the outcome, as you saw before, with the gastrolithas being what could happen if they, yeah. if they don't You're recycle. Bringing that. Yeah. Um, kind of guilt them into recycling in certain cases but also yeah just show them the process um, and show them as 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 you did when you pick that up you know you think you know, 10 plastic bottles how is that possible so it really gets them thinking about it and it really um, encourages them to get involved is anybody else in UAE no. or Dubai doing that no. No. no nobody else in the world is actually collecting the plastic processing it and developing a product that then they sell, sell back to the consumer. So why nobody else is doing it? Is it know-how? Is it technology? Is it... Where is... Effort. <laughs> Effort. Okay, so maybe it's, it's not easy. It's not easy. No, there's far more easy ways to make a living. There's a saying from the business, take it something that nobody want to do yeah. and make a business, yeah? Yeah, that's, 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 that's very, very true. You guys do. Very true. Okay, Chris, so thank you for a lovely tour around your office. My pleasure. I would love to now to find out, like, where is the beginning of Degrade? Uh, well, I guess it stemmed from um, 
when I was younger, um, I used to be very much into surfing, and I was lucky enough to um, to have a, a magazine at the time, a surfing magazine, and I travelled quite a lot around uh, around the UK and Europe, um, and down to Spain and around the Balearics, and saw how much plastic that there was on the beaches, and um, at the time didn't think really in terms of what that what could be done with that until later on when I started getting into the textile manufacturing business and looking at the feasibility of using PET plastic as polyester. When we can consider that degrade started, like how many years ago? Um, registered in the UK in 2010 and then started here in 2012. So how come your journey led to UAE? Well, it was by default really that um, uh, my wife was given an opportunity to work out here and at the same time we looked at the feasibility of trying to set something up in Dubai. Um, it wasn't the first uh, uh, country that we had considered, but certainly with the vision uh, that, uh, that Sheikh Mohammed has here and with the businesses that are already operating here, uh, coupled with the low recovery rates, and the opportunities for large-scale events. Uh, we thought that uh, Dubai would be a, a very good uh, place to start manufacturing. Can you like, highlight one of the products that I would say sell the best? Yeah, I mean, for us, it's polo shirts, caps and bags all the time. Probably 70% of our business is, is those, are those three products. Um, we had a lot of success initially in Europe with replacing plastic bags because the supermarkets wanted to replace plastic bags. So we developed a bag for life from recycled plastic bottles um, and we still do that product today. But you mentioned in Europe, do you guys like export these? Yeah, products? yeah. So we okay, do manufacture so. for European companies as well as American and Australian companies. All right. Can you tell me more about Expo? Because is it, can we say it's achievement to, to get that partnership? Yeah, I mean, we had to pitch uh, with uh, a lot of other companies. Um, for us, it's a great opportunity to showcase our products. Um, for Expo, I think it's a good opportunity for them to be working with a sustainable fashion brand um, like ours. If we can get in front of the global brands by being at Expo, then that will certainly help our, our, our cause. We're also doing a lot of manufacturing for Expo themselves, for the event. So we're, we're, we're looking at producing the media kits with the photographers. I mean, 70,000 photographers they're expecting. So those are where the volumes are that we need. Yeah. So you mean like a vest or some... Exactly. Yeah. A waistcoat with pockets so that you can put your lenses and okay. all your bits and pieces in. And uh, then for the volunteers as well there's a you know, significant volume with that. Um, and that's really what we need in order to drive the business. Did you had any investments? No. Fortunately, my wife was working. She kind of supported me for the first few years. Uh, she also helped with the business. Um, but up until only two years ago, we were running completely on our own, using our own money, um, managing to make a profit, a small profit, never, never having any debt. Um, and uh, two years ago, we met uh, my partner, uh, Jerome Adrianson and his family. Um, and they have, an in they have an industry background in plastics. So we thought that that was a great match because obviously the, the plastics, the technical side of plastics, uh, the composition of plastics is not something that I really ha have knowledge of. Um, so to have uh, Jerome's family on board was, was uh, very helpful for us and they in fact invested in the business in order to allow us to get into the manufacturing side of the process. Okay, so you like joined together now yeah. on your website. You actually building a, a plant or, or, or...? Yeah, the actual building is built. Okay. So the machinery is being installed. Um, we have uh, the brawn from the Far East and the brains from Europe. So the brawn being the conveyor belts and the motors and all the system that's gonna the, the drive the actual flow. Okay. But the technology behind the sensors is all from Norway and Germany. So we have sensors that can detect any small particles of uh, contaminant 
that is going through the system and at different stages of the system take it out and put it into another bag which can then process it um, and that I mean you know when you're looking at the flake the output that we have is is very very clean um, but if you have anything like a piece of metal in there when you go to the fiber stage and the extrusion stage and you're forcing at high pressure hot plastic liquid through tiny little holes and a piece of metal gets in then it, you could have a serious problem so it's really important from our side to get the the optical sorters um, to to do their job correctly and to ensure that we don't have any contamination in the flake okay when is going to be ready when uh, <laughs> me and my team can visit you that's the uh, six million dollar question but yes we do have we do ha have a, a date now we have everything signed um, with Kizad which is where the plant is going to be um, established we have all the approvals which has taken a lot longer than we expected them to take we hoped that going to uh, the government with our plan would have been uh, a fairly quick um, negotiation but it has taken months uh, if not years, to actually get the approvals that we finally need in order to, to begin the operations. Um, but we've also had um, a lot of support along the way, as I said, with the Environment Agency, Abu Dhabi, and with the Minister of Climate Change here in Dubai, who have been very supportive. In fact, they're engaged with some of the collections themselves at the moment as well, so that's, that's going to be great. Um, and uh, yeah, we are going to be the only company in the UAE that is recycling PET plastic. From our point of view, we will be the first to market. Let's, let's hope that there's enough plastic in there to attract other partners in future. But first of all, we have to build up that feedstock uh, to ensure that we can be sustainable. I wish a uh, successful open. Thank you. Can you tell me more like how, as a business, how do you guys do sales? So we're very fortunate because we have a unique product that we get approached by many of the companies that we work with. So we don't actually send salespeople out onto the road knocking on doors. Uh, most of our business comes from companies that really want to buy into our process uh, and really want to engage with us on recycling and have a tangible product to show for it. So. Uh, I mean, our client list is over 100 customers. Um, probably the top 20 blue chip companies in the world, um, which we work with on a contract basis. Um, and yeah, I mean, once we start working uh, with these companies, we tend to get repeat business. So it's not so much cold selling, it's more servicing existing inquiries. So let's say brand contacting you and they like saying, I don't know, was the volume or number we like we would like to have x amount of t-shirts generally speaking our, our moqs for manufacturing are around 200 um, if it's a fabric that we've got in stock if it's not if it's something we have to dye a specific color for a pantone reference or or a specific custom color then it's 5,000 pieces um, and you'll see the price drop by half from 200 to 5,000 from the volume it is a numbers game um, and the more companies that uh, produce uh, or, or buy into sustainable fabrics, the easier it's going to become for companies like us. So with this trademark Greenspun? So we're very proud of Greenspun. Greenspun was the first, uh, first um, trademarked yarn, recycled yarn, to produce 100% recycled polar fleece jacket for Marks and Spencers in the UK. Um, and that was really the first chance we got to get Greenspun on the map. Um, and since then, we've developed product for a lot of the UK high street, Tesco's, um, Marks and Spencers, Morrison's, um, Boots, the chemist, um, all recycled product with Greenspun branding. Uh, we also did quite a large range of products for Coca-Cola um, Greenspun branded for Landmark Group here in the UAE um, using Coca-Cola assets um, and we were approved by Coca-Cola to supply recycled product. Um, so Greenspun has, has got a, a, a good heritage. Um, I would obviously like to see Greenspun on, on any uh, fabrics that we supply 
to the high street. But at the moment, we only supply finished garments. I think in the next year to 18 months, we will start supplying fabrics. And then maybe in the next three to five years, we'll start supplying yarns under the Greenspun branding. The future plan is to supply uh, material for other brands? Yeah. So when you look at Lycra, as an example, Lycra was developed by DuPont. Um, and DuPont are a chemical company. Um, Lycra is one of the brands that they own. But you will find Lycra on uh, clothes that you can buy from many, many different shops. Yes. So we want to be really the Lycra of sustainability with Greenspun. So, so what's next, let's say, the great vision? For us, um, we, have a, we have a business model that is um, not only sustainable, but also scalable. So we could scale this business into any other territory where they have a plastic problem. We want to be known as the company that can, can go in there really and, and help, uh, help them uh, recover it. So help with the know-how or just actually build one of the facilities? Or? Um, both, really. I mean, we can't do everything ourselves. We rely a lot here as well on waste management companies uh, to separate the, the material. Unfortunately, the actual recovery levels have gone down over the past 10 years. Um, that might be because of consumer awareness still by generation not understanding the importance of recycling. Um, but also it might be because there isn't enough offtake for the waste management companies to be able to make money out of actually recycling it rather than landfilling it. Because landfill tax was only bought in last year for the first time. Here in the UAE. In the UAE. Uh, and it's very minimal, but it's still a cost. That is why a lot of the waste management companies here have suddenly focused on trying to sort the materials and trying to actually create a revenue from those materials from people like us who, who are ready and waiting to sign off-take agreements if they can give us the plastic that we need. So we're, we're encouraging these people to change their business model because up until now, waste management companies have been really responsible for taking waste from A to B and not actually processing it into a material that they could get a revenue from. Okay, so that's, uh, that's you are capable to do and, uh, and ready for that. I'm making that commitment on camera. <laughs> we will buy up to a thousand tons a month of your plastic if you invest in sorting machinery. There you go. Just, just outreach the degrade and that's it. <laughs> Biggest challenge you guys have as a company? Certainly the, the recovery of clean material is where the problems start. Once you have the clean material and you take it through the process, it, it's fairly straightforward because everything is a mechanical process. Um, but you can't account for human behaviour. Uh, and that is the biggest challenge that we have. It depends on education. It depends on, um, on how uh, the infrastructure can be set out to make it easy for people. Um, and it kind of relies on people being responsible. The vision for us would be to be the new Lycra of sustainability and have our green spun tag on any other brand's products just to show that the fabric itself is sustainable um, and has been uh, audited through our supply chain. Okay, well, this is what I wish for you. Thank you. Hopefully, yeah, <laughs> in the future, near future, we will gonna see the your branding already on uh, other brands. Thank you. Yeah.